the Smithsonian Institution National Museum of Natural History. And as part of We Dig Bio 2016, which is actually kicking off today, the Smithsonian Transcription Center is partnering with over five different transcription centers, natural history organizations, and volunteers around the world to unlock what biodiversity data is held within these walls. So please make sure that if you are able to and wanting and to come over and kind of share your time with us, please go to transcription.si.edu and sign up, or you can check out everything that's going on at wedigbio.org. All right, so I am Nick Drew. I am one of the Collections Program Technicians. I am Ingrid Roshan. I am a fellow Collections Program Technician. So we are kind of one of the uh, bull forces of digitization here at the museum. Um, my background history, so you guys can know, I started you know, in natural history work over at Yale Peabody Museum in New Haven, Connecticut, um, where we were kind of pioneering what was going on with digitization for natural history museums. So we were going ahead and we were going to do things like um, taking pictures of field notebooks, seeing how we can utilize our databases better. So uh, in that, I was able to be part of a huge collections move, moving almost the entire museum collections over to a new off-campus facility, entering things with anthropology, paleontology, vertebrate zoology, invertebrate zoology, kind of the whole gamut. Um, and I, that's kind of how I got my start. Then I went over and I, a couple years after that, I joined the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, and here I am doing digitization for them as well. My background is also at the Yale Peabody Museum. Um, my first ever project in a museum was in 2009 and was actually doing rapid capture uh, digitization of botany um, pressed plant sheets. And as a college freshman, I had like no idea what I was doing. I didn't even know what digitization was. And this project to put all these images of native Connecticut plant specimens online was just like the coolest, most inspiring thing. So I did four years at the Peabody, um, and in that time, I've been doing you know, digi digitization throughout my museum work. Um, I think people often forget that digitization is not just taking a photo of something and putting that photo you know, on the internet and making it accessible to people, but it's taking these analog collections and bringing them into the digital realm, and that's data capture as well. That's anything that takes the physical and makes it um, available digitally. I joined the Smithsonian in 2013, and I've been here ever since. I've worked on a couple really cool digitization projects, and the most intense, and my favorite one, was um, an ongoing project to digitize all of the fish and mammal, marine mammal flipper radiographs, so that is x-rays of, of um, these specimens. And I have a picture if you want to see. This yes, is one please. of my favorite ones. So I was involved in taking these radiographs, scanning them, capturing the data, and making catalog records that are available online so that researchers and the public can see these. Um, this is uh, Sebastopistes bellulae, which is a mouthful, and it's one of my favorite specimens. Um, this one in particular is one of the tight. So what that means is uh, it's the name-bearing type for this specimen. Uh, it's a very important thing that a lot of researchers want to access. And we're also digitizing for preservation. So instead of mailing this out to someone who wants to look at it, they can now look at it online. And the life of this um, radiograph is going to be prolonged because fewer people are handling it now that we have this image available. Um, and now I'm doing projects with Nick in the collections program, um, doing a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, my current project right now is actually to uh, inventory our entire fossil mammal collection here at the National Museum of Natural History. So that has proved to be a pretty daunting task. The project has been going on for well over a year at this point, but I think that we are finding some really interesting things. A lot of this collection hasn't even been touched since the late 1800s. So it was pulled out of the ground, brought to the museum, maybe looked at a few times, and then left there. And it's been in a drawer ever since. It's over 100 years. It's so actually older than what our museum even is. So what we're finding is that a lot of these collections haven't been recognized. The amount of diversity that we are having within our museum is actually expanding just by looking at what we have. 
And that comes from all these digitization efforts. So like Ingrid said, yeah, digitization, the fun stuff, definitely there's like cool stuff looking at pictures and all of that, but the actual nitty gritty work that scientists use is all this data collection that we're spreading throughout the world. So that's what you guys are gonna be doing when you go onto our website and you can actually transcribe some of these great projects that we have for you this year. So the projects you guys are able to join in on are gonna be things from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, looking at some pollen hearts. And I definitely saw there was a couple of users who were already transcribing stuff. So we have, you know, 15% of the first set already done. And we just started not too long ago. Um, what else do we have going on? We have a Invertebrate project to be able to transcribe the cards there and botanical specimens. So if you guys are definitely want to look at some pictures, we do have some cool plant specimens. You can go ahead and you can transcribe the data that's on those, part of our you know, Smithsonian conveyor belt project. And I wanted to say, yeah. in regards to the conveyor belt project and in regards to your project, one of the biggest challenges to digitization of our collections that we face is the sheer number of specimens we have within this building. Um, there's I'm, 145 million <laughs> objects here. Yeah, That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm currently working in birds, um, and they're trying to data capture all of their specimens. That's over 600,000 records. Um, I don't know how many records you've created. I, I know that I, I think <laughs> I personally have gone through about 10,000 different items in the six months that I've been here, and that equates to about 27, 2800 new records that have never actually been created before. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are two people, and we cannot in our lifetime ever hope to <laughs> digitally capture what, how many million? 145, 145 million, million specimens. Yeah. So this is why the work of volunteers is so important because a team, our team is six people, and even with all of the people that work within this museum, we cannot hope to do it all. We are counting on help from our community. Yeah. yeah, so obviously, like Ingrid said, you know, there's definitely not enough time, but also not enough funding. So funding is a huge impasse when it comes to actually doing a lot of this digitization work. So I know that when I was, you know, before I started working here, I was volunteering my time to help out with digitization efforts, just like you guys are doing online right now. And we really appreciate everything you guys have been able to put in forth for us. Cool. I, I have a story I want to share. Go for it. <laughs> sure way. So, um, I like, so this fish, this is one of my favorite fish, not only because it's, well, it's a scorpion fish. They're really cool, they're like these little, cryptic colored dudes that sit on the ocean floor, a lot of them are poisonous. I'm, I'm going off topic. But this, this fish was collected around about 1838 as part of the U.S. Exploring Expedition. Um, this was the first American-sponsored scientific expedition that circumnavigated the world. And they brought back, well, 50,000 botanic specimens, maybe some of what you're seeing today. Um, 2,000 birds, 588 fish species. I don't know how many specimens that is. That's just species. Um, so when I was working on my bird project, I got this bird. It didn't have a lot of data. I have, I have notes to read because they're cool. And, but I had some clues as to what it might be. And I was able to go online to the Smithsonian libraries where they have digitized all of the reports of the U.S. Exploring Expedition. So digitization is not just specimens, but it's also like all of these associated reports and data with them. And this bird was collected in, ma uh, in northern wheat ear. Um, a male specimen in beautiful condition flew on board the U.S. ship Peacock on the 19th of October. This is in probably 1840, um, several hundred miles off the coast of Africa, like completely so far out of its range. Um, it was captured on board the ship, just hanging out in the rigging, but refusing the kind of food we were able to offer, it died soon afterwards, which is the saddest. But it was collected, and that is like a really cool and unique data point because this bird was so out of its range, out of its migratory range, um, they 
meteors do a migration of like 4,600 miles across the globe each year. And this one just kind of kept going <laughs> and forgot to stop. And so like as part of my digitization, I was able to find the specimen with data and link it with other data that had been digitized throughout the museum and see like put together this really cool detective story of where this bird came from and what kind of crazy shenanigans <laughs> it was up to. <laughs> That's my favorite digitization story. I have a cool one um, from when I was at Yale, actually. So uh, one of our projects there was obviously moving their collection. So I was working on moving the River Paleontology collection from one location to another. So you know, taking a glance at what was going on inside the cabinets, I was actually moving the type specimen. So like Ingrid said, the type specimen is gonna be the name type for that very first animal that ever been made of Stegosaurus. So, um, everybody loves Stegosaurus, so charismatic. So, we were going ahead and we were looking through that collection and started to find some teeth. So, part of this digitization effort was taking inventory of what we have. So, I, you know, go ahead and write stuff down. And then I found some more teeth. These teeth all didn't match up. So, it turns out, I went to the collection manager there and said, Hey, I have two different types of teeth, only one type of dinosaur. What's going on here? ended up being that it was actually a dinosaur that hadn't actually been recorded from that site before. And if anybody knows O.C. Marsh as one of the big dinosaur guys, this was actually his collection. So we were actually able to go see if there had any record of this dinosaur there before. There wasn't. So not only was digitization allowing us to kind of see what we had, but also allowed us to kind of expand what the actual natural history of this particular site looked like. So something as cool as that is possible with digitization. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of numbers, I do have some numbers for you guys. So uh, we did bio, this is not our first year doing this. So last year, we completed just under 4,000 pages in four days. That's incredible. But I know that you know, with the effort of everyone that has coming and returning, anyone who's kind of new, we can totally surpass that this year. Um, anyone can get started anonymously. So if you go to wedigbio.org, you can see all the information there. But I do encourage you to set up an account because that allows you to track your own project. So year upon year, you can kind of see how much you're doing. And what better way to kind of, you know, have a cocktail party or, you know, bragging to your friends, be like, oh yeah, you know, I just digitized 500 pages from the Smithsonian. What have you done? Since June 2013, at the Transcription Center, we have completed 202,434 pages and 6,926 digital volunteers have contributed to this. So thank you so much for that. That is absolutely amazing. And over 72,000 of those are actually from natural history organi organisms. So that is absolutely incredible. Natural history is something that everyone has a passion about. You know, whether you are into birds like Ingrid is or dinosaurs like I am, um, you can find something that you're definitely going to be passionate about. And we really appreciate all the effort that everyone is putting in on over these next four days. Thank you, we love you. <laughs> Other than that, we're probably gonna sign off. We do have a bunch of events going on at the Smithsonian throughout the week and the weekend. Um, I do know that there's gonna be a talk by some of our paleontologists starting tomorrow. Um, also, if you wanna see a little bit of a sneak peek of what we do behind the scenes, we actually set up a Snapchat account. If you just look for the username we Dig Bio, you should be able to find it right there and you kinda of see some of the stories that we're gonna be sharing throughout the days, all right? Have fun transcribing, and thank you again so much for all the work that you guys did.